So I'm out at the gun emplacements again on Pen on Pendennis Point, which is quite fitting because I've got something interesting to show you today. As far as I'm aware, there are no videos on this particular item on YouTube. I think this is a YouTube first. Quite an interesting item. I think uh, John Sherwood will particularly enjoy seeing this. And it is what they refer to as a Boer War Officer's Stove. Or a Boer War Stove. You like the sound of that? Stay tuned. So here it is. A Boer War Officer's Mess Kit. This particular one, definitely an antique. Probably a hundred years old. They're made of tinned copper, plated copper, nickel plated perhaps, or silver, silver plated, silver solder. Uh, they were produced between 1900 and 1940, I think is when they stopped making them. You can see, you might be able to see, the stamp on there. And it comprised of, firstly you can see, that was the finished finish originally. Lovely, lovely silvered finish. So it comprised of the cup, beautifully made pot stand there, a little bit decorative. You can see again, silvered, copper or brass, I'm not sure. And a little alcohol stove within, a little alcohol burner. It took me a little while to figure out how these worked and I'm going to do go through that. I'm going to light it up and do something with it today. This is the snuffer. I believe that had a little um, leather washer in there originally. Perhaps to make a seal here to hold everything in. We're a bit of a curious design in as much as this bit does not screw in. So it's got the, the uh, tank for the fuel there and then it's got a, let me get it in focus here, a tapered like a brass cone that has a little bit of the wick wrapped around it. And because it's cone shaped it kind of wedges in there. There's a wick up inside the I thought there was a, a piece missing when I first got it, but it was because that wick wasn't there. So it wedges in there like that. And you may be able to make out the jets here, so the flames come out horizontally in a star configuration there. So that would be... That would rest first. And then the pot stand goes on top. And then the mess cup, you can see it's still silvered on the outside there. It's been kind of over cleaned this one, I think, in its life, in its history. I was very lucky to come across this. Anyway, so that sits on there. Lid on the top. And away you go. There's a little bit of wicking inside that. Runs up the centre pipe part that acts as kind of a generator, I guess. 
little bit of fuel in there. Till it wedges. So you've got that outer wick that wedges the centre part in, and that's obviously soaked with fuel. So like that bit. That is in fact a light, very difficult to see. has in fact bloomed already. Very nice. What a charming little thing. So we're going to make a nice cup of tea, befitting of a British officer of the turn of the century, early 1900s. They call it the Boer War um, Officer's Mess Kit because it was produced from 1900 to 1940, so it would have been, it would have seen some service during the First World War, I'm sure, some of them. Show you from this side. And the Boer War was eighteen ninety nine to nineteen o two. That's the second Boer War. There was two of them. And there she is. I'll see if I can take some footage when the light isn't quite so bright so that uh, you get an idea of the flame pattern of it. But it's a lovely little thing. It should have originally come in a round, um, like a rawhide case, a leather case, polished leather case. Uh, that's long gone. Gotta keep my out, eye out for one of those. This was around before the invention of the tea bag. So we, of course we're going to use a fine loose leaf tea in the tradition. So we're going to make a nice cup of tea in our enamel mug, which is definitely period appropriate. Um, the British Army had these white mugs. It seems that they were issued with these um, First World War and before. They were popular, they were a popular issue, and later on in the Second World War they were a kind of a muddy brown enamel. I don't know why they were issued white at first, maybe it was a cheaper form of enamel. Um, enamel cups are great. John Sherwood asked me, that one that I usually use, which is a green one, whether it was a Russian issue one, and it's, I've, I've no idea, I, I got it in a hardware in Trinidad, but where its source was before that, I don't know. But the, the issued one was a pint, that green one of mine is a pint, this is actually three quarters of a pint, which is far more dainty and appropriate for, a, for an officer's cup of tea, I think. So, 
and of course the good thing about an enamel mug is you know it's got that nice rolled lip so it's as you it feels like you're drinking out of porcelain and they're a bit more uh, durable so I think they're good I don't knock them bit of a bit old school but they're nice so I'm gonna have some a nice the label's fallen off of this, I think. But this is a nice Earl Grey tea. And I'm going to, staying in period there, I'm going to use some evaporated milk. Evaporated milk was used by, well, it was used in the Civil War, tinned evaporated milk. So that was definitely around. The tea bag had not been although it may have been invented towards the towards 1900 I think it was 18 something late 1800s um, I think I read a, a figure in 1965 only three percent of British people used tea bags so my grandmother was born in 1902 she would, and I remember that she would not use tea bags because she swore it made a difference to the taste, and it does. You can taste the paper because everybody's used to that flavour now, so that you know it's become the norm. But for so long, she she resisted that. But in the end, she weakened for the convenience, as I think everyone did. And um, loose leaf tea is not not as uh, popular. You don't see it on the shelves so much, unless it's a cup, you know, it used to be like a standard cup of tea. But now if it's loose leaf tea, you're usually seeing these sort of gourmet teas. So, according to the information I can find, the British soldiery of the time were allowed five eighths of an ounce of loose leaf tea a day. It was given or served up in little brown envelopes, little brown packets. So I think uh, well it would be one one teaspoon and one for the pot. This by the way is far bigger than a teaspoon. A teaspoon's about half that size, proper teaspoon. So the Boer War wasn't a very good time for the British military. They were still getting the armies to stand up in red coats with white crosses on them. The webbing was white and the coats were red. Uh, but the Boer War was when the first sort of introduction of camouflage, camouflage was starting to be adopted. Not everywhere there, but in many places, when finally people changing from the old ways of of doing battle and adopting to the modern ways. Okay, I do believe we're boiling. Handle is quite hot. Ow. Put the snuffer on. Thusly. So evaporated milk. If you just put a small hole in the top of the tin, if you want to take milk camping, or I find this is how I do it, just put that small hole in there and then just squeeze it out when you want it. Four, five, six, seven's my lucky number. Um, it will double the life of the can because it's not exposed to so much air. When I put that bit of tape on, I mean, even without the bit of tape. If you just put a small hole, like an ice pick size hole, in the top of the can, it will last four days instead of two. It's amazing the difference it makes. Oh, that looks like quite a decent cup of tea. So 
So there it is. The Boer War Officer's Mess Kit. Bit of a posh canteen cup. Tuesday. The King. Mm. Quite pleasant. The ramparts again. Decent colour, nice cup of tea. Mm.